Okay, um, sure. welcome to Gru, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day and coming on the show, bud. Rocco, man, it is a pleasure to uh, to be on your show, and I'm glad that you had me, man, so thank you. Definitely, definitely. I'm more than happy. Thank, thank you. <laughs> so, like, the first thing, why isn't the Gru, okay, there we go. <laughs> the, the first thing I wanted to ask you is probably, you know, typical question is what drew you to want to be in in the world of acting um i could answer that um <laughs> in a i could answer that in a caring sensitive heartfelt <laughs> tugging on the heartstrings kind of way or i could answer it brutally honest um i would say either inspiration <laughs> i would say I would say either inspiration or jealousy. Okay. So um, when I was uh, when I was uh, probably 19 years old, I went to see my younger brother graduating from high school and he was in the drama club. And so they were doing some sketch or skit on stage. And I remember watching it going, if he could do that, I can do it. So I was like, that's where it really started me along the path of acting, but I've always had a, a love for <clears throat> the entertainment industry from the time I could watch television. You know, I was three, four years old uh, watching uh, TV. I'd memorized commercials, theme songs. Uh, I started to get older, my favorite TV shows, movies. I would, rem I would remember lines from them and I'd quote them to myself. And, and you know, I even I had brothers and sisters, you know, we would play, act those things out. So it's always kind of been there. But when I saw my brother on stage, that's when I was like, man, I, that looks like it, it'd be something that I would want to do. And um, yeah, that's when I actually, I think, started to put into motion uh, what it would look like to pursue it. Okay. So that was a long time ago. Long oh. time ago. So what was the first role you ever had? Like the first either TV, film role? The very first project um, I ever, I guess that anything that I would constitute as it being something for public consumption uh, <laughs> would be, uh, a television show uh, was on US on the USA Net. Well, the very well, the very very first thing I ever did was a commercial. It was okay. um, David, Ar David Arquette used to have these one eight hundred call ATT commercials. One eight hundred call ATT, and so that was the very first commercial. The first thing I ever did on television was a David Arquette one uh, eight hundred call ATT commercial. But the very first um, acting role that I had was on a series called uh, Pacific Blue. Oh, yeah. Uh, which used to be, yeah, it used to be on the USA Network. It was like bike cops at the beach. It was like yeah. watching yeah. bikes or something like that. So yeah, I, I, uh, I did it. That was the very first thing that I ever did. I played a radio engineer. That was a long time ago, man. I remember, I remember getting, getting that audition, man. That whole experience was crazy. But uh, yeah, that was the first thing I ever did. Wow, okay, okay. At, at, a, at all the roles you've done, what, what do you think you had the most fun with like with what role do you think you had the most fun with you know fun is interesting man because fun is fun is not relative to roller coasters or skydiving even though there can be that type of exhilaration in the yeah. pursuit of acting sometimes the fun is the challenge of the discovery of the character sometimes fun can be in an audition i can tell you that <clears throat> one of the greatest experiences I had acting was an audition. Um, I was auditioning for um, a series called the Sarah Connor Chronicles, which was, oh, yeah, yeah it, used to, it was based off the Terminator 2 yep. uh, uh, or Terminator series, but it was on Fox. And I remember I auditioned for that and I've had some stellar auditions. I auditioned, I worked my tail off. And when I walked out, I called my, my manager and I told him, I said, man, I think I nailed that. I think I absolutely nailed it. And unfortunately I didn't book it, but he called me and he said, uh, yeah, I called the casting people. And he said that their response was, that's the best audition they've seen for this role so far. Unfortunately, 
not going to cast you because you don't match up and blah, 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 and so, 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 but your auditioning was the best they'd seen. Now, here's the thing. Sometimes it's just like, I just blow smoke up my behind. They don't want to give yeah. me the real, you know, the real deal on how I did. But there was a connection with the material that I knew and I could tell by the response in the room that I was killing. I know I, and I've obviously booked other jobs, so I've done well in other areas, but in this particular area, I could tell, I was like, man, I really, I really did well. So I, 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 that, I just remember that so vividly. I remember the entire experience going in, auditioning, walking out, getting in my truck, call my manager. I, I remember that like it was yesterday. Uh, as it relates to fun and, and jobs that, um, that I've been paid to do, yeah. uh, I was, um, I, I, I was a series regular on a show called The Dead Zone. Yep. And um, I played uh, the best friend of Anthony Michael Hall, yep. uh, who was the lead on that show. But we did an episode that's focused on my character in which Lou Gossett Jr. played my dad. And so to have, you know, an Academy Award winning actor, one of the first black actors to ever win a, an Oscar, betray my dad, it was, it was exhilarating. That was a lot of fun doing those roles as well. And then silliness, you know, the most fun I've had was probably on the series where I played a Jamaican character named Bosco on a TV series called Girlfriends. So he said, I have a Jamaican accent. I start to talk to a guy like this here. Say, so, hey, so come here, Dad. I said, I want to chat with you for a minute. All right. So I want to just start chat with you for a minute, guys. Say, it looks so good to me. You know, understand? So, you know, being able to do that and that accent, no Jamaicans, y'all are going to be like, that was terrible. You butchered our language. <laughs> I'm sorry. It got me paid. So I don't know what to tell you. I will butcher Russian. I will butcher German. Give me the check. That's all. Right. Show me the money and I'll Show put whatever the accent on there. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. So those, <laughs> those, those, are some of, those are some of the experiences, man. And it's and it, it goes, you know, episode to episode, uh, project to project. Um, but yeah, those are some of the highlights of things that have been the most fun for me. Oh, nice, nice. And is there a role you would you would love doing? Like like any any role out there you would you would love to, to do or a film you would love to do? Yeah, you know, um, when I was when I was a, a younger man, a much more virile and physically fit man, I um, I wanted to be I always wanted to play Sugar Ray Robinson. That was like a dream of mine in the biopic or biopic, depending on how you pronounce that word. Um, Sugar Ray Robinson. I still have a desire to do that on some level. I still have a desire to to portray somebody historically, you know what I mean? To be able to really give myself over and to try and bring to to life somebody who may may maybe may still be here to try and you know recreate their life. But that would be something that would be amazing to do. Uh, other than that, um, I guess to play a superhero. To do like a Marvel or a DC uh, project would be uh, amazing. Um, as it relates to, if I was going to if I was going to do something horror wise, like yeah. I would want it to be iconic. I would want it to be not just you know the same way like there's Jason and there's you know, Freddy Krueger, and I don't know if those guys were that before their first movie but like before the first Jason came out I know that there were books and comic books and all that stuff but when he came out it was just like it was like Candyman is iconic I, I love that movie I right love so you know if I was going to do something villainous I would want it to be like a, a horror movie like that more about the the dread of the character as opposed to maybe like super bloody slasher-ish but something along those lines but there's a lot of things, man. Voiceover wise, I'd love to be a cartoon character. That'd be fantastic, you know, do voices. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of things that are out there, but uh, before I get out of this world, I would love to, to, to play somebody famous and be a superhero. Those things would be awesome. That, that would be, that would be amazing. Like yeah. who's your, your, your favorite superhero and villain? <laughs> <laughs> so, my favorite, so my favorite superhero of all time, just my absolute like 
my dude uh, in DC is Batman. I don't know why I just, I just, I love Batman. Um, but uh, probably number one is gonna be the Hulk. Yeah, I yeah. absolutely yeah. love, 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 love all iterations of them, different colors, the intelligent Hulk, the dumb Hulk, like I love them all. So um, the Incredible Hulk is probably my favorite. My favorite wacky off the wall superhero that I would love to hear something. I, I would love to play this character because I don't think anybody would ever think to do it. But on the old Fat Albert cartoon show that Bill Cosby used to do, yes. the, the Cosby kids, their favorite cartoon was called the Brown Hornet. And whenever they would be sitting around on the, t on the cartoons, it was a cartoon within a cartoon. So they'd be like, it's time for the brown hornet. Yeah, it's time for the brown hornet. And they'd all take off running. And then, the brown hornet, hornet, hornet. My trusty pal, Stinger. So, you know, he would, he, so this is like his whole iteration, like the brown hornet is super clean, just clean cut Afro and huge chest. Like the brown hornet would be something that I would love to do. I would love to play the brown hornet. But, you know, Hulk, Batman, brown hornet. Uh, favorite villain, um, favorite villain, um, you know, so I love, so my favorite, my favorite misunderstood villain is probably Clubber Lang. Oh, uh, from, I, from, from, from yeah. Because yeah. everybody thought he was a villain and he was just a man who was hungry. He was misunderstood. He was from the streets. He saw what Rocky had and he wanted it, but they made him the yeah. bad. I was like, nah, bro, that's, <laughs> my man was just grinding. He was grinding, he was hungry. Say, woman, say, woman, you lay in bed at night, late at night, think about a real man. You know, it's all that stuff, like, Clubber Lang, man, he was, he was that dude. So, like, Clubber yeah, Lang, um, Darth, Darth Vader, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter is one of my favorite villains of all time. Um, the favorite villain, though, I mean, there's nobody that I can really think of off the top of my head that I would want to necessarily portray. But I think my the part that I love about those villains the most is that there is the apparent struggle for humanity, the normalization of how evil they are, which is a very human characteristic. Like as much as we don't want to admit it, humans don't want to admit when when we're wrong, we will always want to justify it. and these guys epitomize that. But at the same time, you know, trying to be human. And so if I had, you know, something like that, that would be, I mean, it'd, it'd be amazing. That would be uh, absolutely fantastic. Sure. Yeah. Nice. And what about horror films? What are some horror films that you like to watch? So the very, and this movie still scares me to this day. Uh, is Carrie. Oh, yeah. So I was 12 years old when I saw Carrie. I saw it at like 2 o'clock in the morning. It was it was rerunning on some old show, on some old network uh, when I was really small. And I remember I got up in the middle of the night and I sat in front of our floor model television and I put pillows around me like a fort so the light wouldn't shine throughout the entire house. And I watched Carrie from like 11 inches away and when that hand comes shooting up out of the grave at the end of grass, I shout, I scream, it's like four o'clock in the morning. I was like, this still scares the hell out of me to this day. So Carrie was, was terrifying. Like I said, I mentioned, I, I like the Jason series. Mm -hmm. um, I was a fan when I was much younger, and this is gonna date me of the Hellraiser series. The older that I've gotten, I've had a, uh, I've been drawn toward the more supernaturally based okay. uh, um, horror movies that are like religious themes. So, you know, I know they're trying to remake, um, oh, what's coming out with Russell Crowe right now? The Exorcist. Yeah. So, like, that, so like that's, that's coming out. That's something that would, that I would go see, you know, The Exorcism of Emily Rose is a, a horror that's film cool. that I was, yeah, I was a big fan of that. I like yeah. the first two Conjurings. I didn't watch the the third one, oh, but I, okay. I like the first two. Um, and then just like I'm a huge fan of, of like that old campy, um, 
80s and 90s, you know, uh, Poltergeist, like way back then, you know, like those those old movies, Poltergeist, and like I said, the Hellraiser series, like, like those movies, they're so horrible and campy now when you look at them, but they were terrifying when, <laughs> when I was 16, 14, 15 years old. Candyman, I saw when I was in college with some college buddies of mine, and that night all of us slept in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> you, you think I'm joking. There was like seven 19 year olds all sleeping on the same floor. And then one of us would say Candyman like three times. Was, shut up, shut up, don't you say it, don't you say so. Like that movie freaked us out. Um, but uh, the of the newer movies, I, I, like I really like the first Saw. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like the second one okay, but then it just became too much like the torture porn aspect of things like the right? drama of the story being and the first one was so good because it had a twist at the end. Yes. Um, yes. So like if it's a good storytelling, man, I love them. But those are some of the ones that I like. I like more of the spiritually based, you know, kind of kind of creepy ones. Um I haven't seen Megan yet. I haven't seen that yet. Not I saw that. That's that's, that's more comedy than horror i mean it was it was it was a decent film it, it was yeah. good but it, it to me it was like more like funny than it was like like oh my god like it, it definitely wasn't wasn't chucky chucky scary yeah man chucky was crazy i mean that's what i'm talking about like chucky there was like that was crazy you know what you know what the thing that i like too is the is the crossover in in that you see and i don't think people are 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 really tapping into it, but the crossover in the type of genre. So it's like either you have like the slasher, like bloody, 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 or you'll have the horror movies where you have like, uh, you know, the psychodrama or the weird kind of creepy kid. But there was a movie that came out a couple of years ago called Brightburn. I don't know. Oh, if you're yeah, I saw it, that. About the yeah. little boy. Yeah. He, he was like basically Superman, but he was evil. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he was getting picked on and all that stuff. And then he just snapped. He was like, I'm freaking bright burn. I'll break your bones and what? So it's so like, you know, like that movie, I really, really enjoyed. There was a comic book movie, uh, what Superman, and I forgot it was like Superman, man, I'm so, I hate that I'm drawing a blank on it, but it was an animated feature in which Superman is make it makes everybody believe that he's going to be unbridled. Like I'm really going to be the bad guy that you guys say you want me to be. I'm going to stamp out evil, and it was frightening to think about Superman being bad. I and know. So and bright man do it like you think about all the evil a person that powerful could actually do. A horror yep. film like that, be able to look at somebody and burn their brains through their eyeballs and oh, I know. Like, you could do craziness with those type of films. So Brightburn had that had that to it and that Superman animated film. It was weird because it was an animated movie. I, it shook me. I was like, oh snap, man, what if Superman was bad? <laughs> you know what I mean? So like you could really go to some dark places that way, but um, yeah, I, I'm a huge, fan, huge fan of the uh, horror genre, man. I like oh, it. Sweet, sweet, nice. Yeah, that's what I I love. My, like that's my my number one thing I watch are horror movies. Mm -hmm. I I met uh, years, 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 years ago. Um, at a uh, at a Q and A in L.A., I met Wes Craven. He oh, was, uh, he was he was. Um, he was at the uh, DGA, the Directors Guild, and he was uh, showing a screening, I think of one of his older movies, and he was just answering questions about it. And I got a chance to go. And I talked to him for like five minutes. I was coming out of the parking garage. He was there. I was like, oh snap, what's right? Nicest guy you ever want to meet. He was really, really nice. I was like, man, I expected you to have demons and snakes coming at your fire, your eyes and fire coming at your mouth, man. You're a nice dude. He's like a regular looking old dude, man. I was like, man, I thought you had pitchforks in your back pocket. So he was just, he was, he was a nice guy though. Um, so, um, but horror, horror is, um, you know, Rob Zombie, what he's yeah. done. Yeah. Um, and in, in, in the horror film genre, at first when he came out, I was like, Rob Zombie is going to make movies. You're yeah. like, I wonder how that's going to be. <laughs> Would you say it again? You're probably like, 
I I wonder how that's gonna be. Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, like, don't you play? Aren't you a bassist? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, but nah, he kill. He's killing it, man. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No. And uh, what about songs? Like, what kind of of, of music is on your playlist? I'm a, I have a, I have a very eclectic style. Uh, the only thing that I really don't, and you know, if, if this is off putting to your audience, please forgive me. The only thing I can't do is death metal. Okay. I can't okay. do the. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't, I can't do that, man. I can't do. The death metal. <laughs> if I don't my blood, if I must, <laughs> like I just, I can't do that. <laughs> but I love, uh, I love, I, I do love heavy metal. I love is a strong word. I like heavy metal. Uh, love rock. Uh, huge jazz fan. Country and western, old country and western. Uh, classical music. I really do. I listen to everything. Um, I, uh, what was I playing the other day? <clears throat> I was playing uh, Brazilian music. I was playing oh, some, uh, yeah, I was playing some cumbia uh, uh, and short art. It was a mix of a couple of different artists, Cayetano Beloso and this guy named Cartola. I'm sorry, Car uh, uh, yeah, Cartola, that's his name. <clears throat> so just listen to a bunch of different, you know, that kind of, that kind of music. But I love, man, I just love just definitely hip hop from the hip hop generation. <clears throat> Huge, huge hip hop fan of old stuff. I know I sound like my parents. You guys don't get off my lawn with your trap music. When I was growing up, everybody had a beat that you could dance to, like Jay Z and Biggie. You know, it's like that's how I feel like right now. But you know, I love, I love that kind of music, man. Uh, I just love it all. So. <laughs> What would be your go-to karaoke song if you were doing karaoke? Superstition, easy. I do it ah. every time. Superstition, Stevie Wonder, super easy. Everybody loves it. Superstition, easy. Next, easy. <laughs> and what about junk junk food? What what is your go-to junk food like? you know, like pizza or something like that? Um, it's interesting that you, right now, <clears throat> I'm on a real health kick, nobody's sponsoring me, but those, these, these little candies that used to always come, uh, I don't, it doesn't matter if I show them, they're like the lemon heads, like the little chewy lemon heads. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the cherry chans from back in the day, like any of the ones that little came in a little box like this, the really sour candies, the yeah. sour candies, I like those. Uh, just I'm in a real, real, really weird, sweet tooth mood right now. Might be okay. crazy. I don't know. It's like, why am I eating all this candy right now? Like, what's wrong with me? Am I my second trimester? <laughs> like, why do I have these cravings? Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't really, you know, I'm not a sh real sugary guy like that. I do like, you know, my cakes and cookies. Yeah, of course. Uh, probably chocolate chip pecan cookies or oatmeal raisin cookies are my two favorite cookies and then my favorite cake if it's not if it's homemade my favorite cake is my mom's German chocolate cake and oh, like yeah. I eat that man oh, <clears throat> holidays my mom makes me think of all that stuff <clears throat> so German chocolate cake is probably my favorite my favorite homemade baked good but yeah um I don't normally have a kind of a junk food craving because you can see, man. I mean, I'm not like I'm not I'm not like muscly, but I'm not fat. You know, I'm well, a yeah, regular yeah, yeah. dude, so I don't eat a whole lot of a whole lot of junk food stuff. Yeah, exactly. When I do, that's what I that's what I go toward. Okay, okay. And is there anything coming up for you that you want to plug? Like any anything new you're going to be working on for film or TV? So, um, <clears throat> I I would want to like uh, give a shout out real quick to a couple of my um, a couple of my social media channels uh, comic uh, comic John L Adams uh, that's gonna be uh, my Instagram Twitter uh, Facebook um, and then um, 
pretty much all my social media is comic book John L. Adams. As it relates to uh, other things that I'm doing, like I create content and I promote things. I have uh, some improv things that I'm going to be doing and posting soon. But as it relates to actual projects, I just finished Wolfpack uh, for yes. Paramount Plus. Uh, Wolfpack for Paramount Plus, which has been a huge blessing. The ratings just came out and said that so far this year, I think we're the number four or fifth highest streamed uh, show. <clears throat> so second season, give me the check, baby. Um, no, uh, it's, it's been like, I'm like, yeah, you guys are doing well. Bring back David Lang. Um, so I played a lead dad of uh, Armani Jackson, who's doing a, a brilliant job, uh, Sarah Michelle Geller and uh, Rodrigo Santoro. Um, that's the project that I just finished. So I did five episodes out of the eight on that. Well, I said Wolfpack with Paramount Plus, so I just did that. And then at the end of the year, uh, they're remaking The Color Purple into a musical. Yeah. And last summer, I shot one scene for that. So if it stays off the cutting room floor, um, I'll be in The Color Purple uh, this, uh, this Christmas. But uh, beyond that, I'm continuing to audition. I've been close to getting a couple of things. Uh, hasn't quite panned out yet, but it's a numbers game. And uh, I, I love what I'm doing. So just like Wolfpack came along and hopefully I'll be there back for a second season. Uh, there'll be other auditions that are coming up too. So uh, just find, follow me on social media. Trust me, if I book something and you follow me on social media, you, you will know, <laughs> you will know. So. <laughs> Um, I'll say follow me at Comic John L. Adams, all social media, um, everything, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, TikTok, everything, Comic John L. Adams. And uh, just stay in the loop and I'll let you guys know. Well, I was saving the best for last. I was, I was going to wait to the end to, to, to talk about Wolf, Wolf, Wolf Pack. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'll end the interview with a few questions. About the show, and then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's 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 the current show. That's the show that's hot. <laughs> yeah, it is, man. I mean, and then it's not. I wouldn't say surprisingly show. Uh, so I remember when I auditioned for it. Um, I didn't know that Sarah Michelle Geller was attached. Like I had no clue. I just got the audition for it. Uh, Wolfpack Paramount Plus. When I read what the breakdown was. I already, I kind of knew then that whoever's attached to it, it should be a really uh, easy audience to pick up on. If the execution is done well, then <clears throat> that's exactly uh, what should happen. And um, I mean, it, it was absolutely ex what you would expect. It was sexy uh young adults you had uh some stellar actor uh, acting anchoring it like i said with sarah michelle geller rodrigo Santero, my boy lanny june um the woman who played my wife on the show amy yeah. amy, amy Peets. and so you know and i like to think that i did an okay job uh, holding yeah. things down so you know with with all of those things being said uh it was a recipe to be um, nothing but successful. And then, you know, Jeff Davis did an amazing job in not just this show, but then also um, Teen Wolf and packaging both those together to really launch this new um, cycle of, you know, werewolf and we're not vampires. There's no vampires. There's I hope not. I don't know. But if they are, and they make me one and I can be on it. I'll be a vampire. Whatever you want me to do, Jeff, I'll do. Um, but <clears throat> but no, it's a werewolf show, and so with werewolves, vampires, all of that, and young, sexy, hot kids, it was like you knew it was gonna, it, it had a real chance. But then when I found out that Sarah Michelle Geller was attached, former Buffy the Vampire Slayer, as well as everything else, all the horror movies that she's done, yes, and, and her experience, her experience doing this, I was like, okay, well, this is a no brainer, and that's exactly what's happened. You know, they've done a fantastic job promoting the show. Um, my friends and family, which it's interesting. You don't really expect my, you know, like my 60 year old female cousins to be like, mm, those, those werewolves are sexy. 
You know what I'm just like, okay, first of all, calm down. You know, you work at the steel plant. So, you know, no. but it's like, no, they love it. Like people have really tuned into it and they've enjoyed it. And so yeah. uh, it's found an audience beyond what I expected, which is going to be young people. And um, it's, it's reached out to a much wider audience. And so that, that part of it has been, it's been great. Uh, and being a part of that cast and the people who are making it work has been wonderful. And it's been great shoot because we film it in Atlanta. Atlanta's a wonderful place to film as well. Okay. Uh, so it's all, all in all, it's, it's, it's been a huge, a huge blessing to do that. <laughs> when I, when I first watched watch a show like that, because I, when I heard Teen Teen Wolf the movie was being made, I was like, oh my god, because I was a huge fan of the series. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out the movie was being made, I was like, I have to watch the movie. And then I watched the movie, I loved it. And then on Paramount Plus, I saw right next to Teen Wolf the movie, it said Wolf Wolf Pack and Sarah Michelle Gellar Buffy was on like the cover. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, it's Buffy. I was like, I have to watch this show. I was like, I, I didn't know that Buffy's back, like Cyrus back in in this world again. Yeah. And and I was like, I, I, I had no idea she was back. And then I was like, let me watch it. And I per put on the first episode and I absolutely loved it. And you're the one who plays your son, or yeah, yeah, Ronnie. Yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie. Mm -hmm. He is so good. Like, he's. Oh, yeah. he, he's really killing it like he and he's a good dude too he's a good dude too you know uh, normally he's a you know that's the first question people ask well what, what is that person like what was it like working with so-and-so like i know what they look like on the camera and he is he's just like a really nice guy um uh, super talented uh and he's been doing this for a minute and so i'm glad that he's having an opportunity on this level, on this stage, and it's for to be doing as well as it is. But uh, he made it easy to play his dad. Uh, he's a really giving actor, um, and um, yeah, we had an opportunity. Just I think we clicked. Uh, I believe that comes across on screen. And so, uh, yeah, you know, he's he's good, man. He's a good dude. Well, I think the fans of the show like like you better than his mother because the mother the mother does the, it, it's it's her son and she and and she and she doesn't like him but at least the father you at least your character does <laughs> yeah man yeah and the funny thing is like she and i talked about it when we were on set she's like i'm such a bitch I'm like yeah you are i'm glad i'm not yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know but you know, you know, Amy, she, she did what she did with it. But yeah, they it was not very flattering the way her character was uh no, it's not. written. No. <laughs> I remember the second episode I read, you know, no spoilers if you haven't seen it, guys. Hopefully this isn't a spoiler, it's just she when she slaps him. Mm -hmm. So when she did that, I remember I read that and I was like, man, they've all crucified his chick. Like, you hear me slapping your son on the TV. And sure enough, I and mean, so many of my friends were like, I hate his wife. I hate your wife. I hate his mother. And I was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, especially when he starts getting his, like, wolf, wolf hearing, and he overhears the mother basically saying she hates him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's like, oh. I'm like, come on, what the hell? <laughs> and I'm just like, baby, you might be part, you don't know, you, you gotta calm down. <laughs> so, um, it'll be interesting to see how, how the characters develop, because there is a, a genuine expectation that they're going to be coming back to do more. Oh, definitely. All the success. So we'll see what happens, man. But um when i was here when we were working on it and they were telling me about the show and everybody behind the scenes i hadn't had an opportunity to see anything they were like it just looks so good it's so beautifully shot it's so well executed here and i'm like okay 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 and it's just like you when i saw the the pilot yeah i was blown away i was like man this this looks way better than i would have envisioned it like i mean 
it's paramount. So I'm like, I know you guys have the money. Well, yeah. Cool. So it's just like, I know that's not an issue, but I didn't know what to expect. And when I saw it, I was blown away. I was like, this, this looks beautiful. It's really well done. Yeah, cause I, I, I think I, I read somewhere that the actor that, that plays our Mon, Monty's friend, one of the other wolves, um, Tyler Lawrence Gray. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard this was, was this like his first role? I don't know that. Like I talked to Tyler a couple of times uh, on set, and then talked to him when we had the rap party. Oh, but okay. I didn't. Um, I didn't ask him about his experience. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you though that if that is real, if that is, if that was his first time, then he is absolutely babe roothing this joint. <laughs> he is. I mean, like I, I can't. I can't articulate. When I go back and I watch it, now that you're saying that, I'm definitely going to go back and dissect it. And Tyler, if you're watching, I'm going to be very critical. <laughs> no, I'm going to go back and watch it. And I'm just going to be like, man, this kid is, he's killing this. Because you watch his, he's done, he's yeah. doing a great job. But for it to be his he's, first thing and to be a role this big, is like, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I remember the very first series regular role that I had and I thought, okay, I'm taking acting classes and I have an acting coach, and but, but the development between there and where I am now is is light years, just as it relates to experience and uh, just the the practice of acting. But Tyler, he's coming out like man, right out the gate, just exactly hearing it strong. So yeah, man, it's it, like, I, and that's the thing I love about this too is that with the actors who are involved um, and then the guest stars that they brought in um, and that I can only imagine that they will likely, hopefully bring in moving forward. Um, it makes you want to step your game up. You know, it makes you really want to, uh, you always want to do your best, but it really, for me anyways, like I, I love it. I, I'm always obsessing over how can I make a connection between my character and um, Everett or Armani's character yeah. uh, because of that very thing we talk about not liking the mom well yeah exactly uh, I mean you can, you can see he's he's definitely closer to his dad because his his dad you know your your character he has a more caring heart for his son <laughs> yeah you know that you know that stems from a lot of things too Rocco so like when I was when uh, uh, well, if, if we want to like delve into it, I remember when I got the audition material and I realized that it was an interracial relationship. Yeah. You know, that in and of itself automatically put me in the frame of mind of uh, thinking about how the audience is going to respond. You have an interracial relationship. You have um, a white wife who in our, in our society and the way things are now may be viewed a certain way as how she's talking to her black son. And then how was the black dad going to respond and try and balance? I mean, it's her son. Well, yeah, so what is he balancing against? But there's still that inner struggle there with the dynamics of, of race. And so um, the balance of being uh, very sympathetic to what he was going through, but at the same time, uh, as the show goes on and, you know, even the way the, the series in the first uh, season ends, um, you know, there might be some kind of conflated ideas about how this relationship is really going to develop. Uh, David's, David's love for his son married with his desire to discipline his son and make sure that in his eyes, he grows up to be this upstanding black kid this, to a black man, you know, so. Um, for me, there's a lot of dynamics. If you hear the interviews with um, Sarah and Rodrigo and, and them talking about uh, mental health, Bella Shepard's character, she uh, intentionally chooses to not be associated with any social medias, computers, phones, yeah, exactly. uh, kind of protest against that kind of stuff. So they're dealing with mental health as it relates to unplugging there and Every Armani's character has uh, psychogenic tremors, and yeah. my character might have some of those type things. Um, so when you have all of that combined, uh, and then you add the layer of the dynamics of race and, and what that can play, 
there's a lot of complexity uh, in David's character and in, in my character, David, <clears throat> and also in the relationship with uh, the other characters in the show as it relates to all those other dynamics, you know, sexuality, mental health, racism, like all those things. Uh, so it's a, it's a, um, it's a, a melting pot of uh, societal goodness or badness. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just a bunch of stuff is in there. It's a gumbo, and a lot of a lot of ingredients are in there, man. So um, the show itself is amazing, um, and it'll be interesting to see how they continue to develop the characters. But they have a very good jumping off point, in my estimation. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At and like 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 you're saying like i another thing i love about this show is how die diverse it is like like your character is is married to a white mm -hmm. white woman and mm -hmm. with a inter a interracial son a black a black son and mm -hmm. the black son is like a a strong powerful young 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 black lead for the show and then like you said, you have Tyler, who's who who plays a uh, a uh, gay gay where where werewolf. So you you got Tyler with with the 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 L the the L L G B B T Q community, and mm -hmm. it's like a whole mix of stuff in in this one series. Yeah, man. I mean, everything you just said, that's exactly what it is. And so um, there's nothing to be said other than um, I'll be excited to see what the second season is going to entail. This first season, I think, went, I don't know how much better it could have really gone other than you always want to be number one. Well, yeah, of course. You know? um, but to be number four coming out the gate and to make that much noise and with Sarah coming back, um, I think second season is is just on the precipice of really being an explosion. And it, it definitely has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So if, it, if it does come back for a, a second season, would would you love to do a scene with the queen herself, Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Oh yeah, man. I mean, in the in the first in the I'm sorry, in the second episode, in the second episode, we like pass each yeah, other. Yeah. Basically, yeah. when Everett has to come down and talk to her, so we have that brief little. But uh, yeah, to get a chance to go head to head against her. Um, all those guys, like I, I didn't get a chance to act with Lanny. I didn't get a chance to act with really anybody other than Amy. I didn't get a chance to act with Rodrigo, uh, yeah. with any of the kids except for, for Armani. Well, yeah. And so to have a chance to be able to really, you know, rub shoulders with with those guys is is going to be fantastic. You know, if and when that opportunity happens. So I would love to go tete a tete with Miss with Miss Geller. Like, yeah, oh this God, yes. this You've been harassing my son for a whole season. What's up? <laughs> like, no, but all of that, though, is going to be very much subdued. It's going to be very, very subdued. So, yeah, that's that's so going to be there. And then Sarah pulls out her her skill set from Buffy and oh and yeah, just throwing you yeah. all over. <laughs> yeah, and I'm dead. Yeah. Oh well, good while lasting, son. You know. <laughs> well, um, thank thank you so much for taking time out and doing this. It was really fun meeting you, Rocco. Man, it was a blast meeting you as well. Um, please uh, send me the interview once you're done with it. I would okay. love to uh, promote it, put it up on my social media, and. Um, yeah, man, this is this has been great, brother. So I really appreciate you. It's my first interview. I'm gonna put this on everything. Like I've been like, what is my first TikTok gonna be? And I think it might be just me be going. I think that might just be my first TikTok. You should do that. You should definitely make a death death metal TikTok video. Like that, no one would see that coming. Right. I think that I, I, that's the thing. Like I didn't want to. I'm like I've done dumb things. 
for Instagram and like yeah. not thought it out, but I'm like, I haven't done that. my first TikTok post yet, even though I'm sound, signed up. I'm like, what would it be? And I think that might be it. That, 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 that would be perfect. <laughs> so, um, man, this, this was an absolute uh, pleasure, man. And I appreciate you for thinking about me and for, for, uh, for uh, allowing me to do the interview with you, bro. So Definitely, uh, yeah, man. send it to me when you get done, man. I would love to promote it. And, um, and listen, man, we come back for a second season, hit me up. I'll definitely uh, sit down with you and talk to you some more. So oh, sweet. Um, Definitely. I'm totally down for that. Yes. <laughs> I really appreciate you, Rock. So listen, man, you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your weekend, man. I appreciate you. And uh, thank you very much, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate you, too. So definitely have a great weekend. All right. You, too. I'll talk to you soon, brother. All right, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.